the Arctic Monkeys from their new album, which uh, by now a lot of you will have heard. Tranquility, Base Hotel and Casino. That was the world's first ever monster truck front flip. Uh, a sort of apocalyptic fairground waltz. Alex Turner from uh, the Arctic Monkeys, welcome back to the show. I just asked you off here how long you're over here. I'm presuming, are you still living in L.A.? Yes, Steve. Hello. Yes. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's lovely to see you. Why did you move? Why, why, when you wanted to move away or relocate or go somewhere where you didn't have to be Alex Turner all the time? Why, why LA? Why were it there? Wait, in my memory now, I see it as we did our fourth album there, Suck It and See. And then and around that uh, time, that was the second record we'd done there. We started to make a few friends there. Right. And in my memory now, it's like we did that album and then we didn't come back after right. it. I think in reality we did, but yeah. I, I think uh, it was only momentary that we returned. What, so what, did you just find, you just sort of slipped into it? Did you ever, did you, you didn't think, yeah, I'm, I live here now, you just ended up living there, in a way? I can't, I, I can, I think there's probably a few things that contributed to it. Right. Um, Cause it's strange, it, it's a strange place though, LA. I, I, I wouldn't disagree with you. Yeah, I, it's. I'd say there were multiple things that sort of yeah. conspired that meant that sort of converged at that moment when yeah. we were like, "All right, we're gonna all gonna relocate here for yeah. a minute," and that isn't the case anymore. Actually, like um, only Matthew and I are still sort of spending most of our time there. The others of uh, back over here now, but um, it's not somewhere I enjoyed necessarily going the first time we went with the band, and and, and definitely was something that grew on me over time. I did take one other trip there when I was an eight-year-old kid. And my grandmother took me to really? California, yeah, right. to visit some friends of theirs. I, we went to San Francisco, and we drove and visited their friends that they'd made on one of their previous trips to America. Her and her husband. I've I've, I've got quite a. I kept a dad on that trip actually which I've which I've still got my, my auntie suggested that I took this diary on this trip and um, I don't know I remember having a great time and like we were really well looked after by these friends of theirs and it was just I'd, and I wonder if that sometimes I think it was that the start of me yeah like uh, yeah. did that sort of contribute in some way to like when it when it came to like mid 20s I was like I still yeah. had this I see, you see there were a couple of points where I considered going to the States uh, once in the 90s and when once in the early noughties when and I found myself virtually out of work, and I thought I might try. I might try America, and then I just thought I'm not sure if I could put up with the constant babble, right? You know, just the constant the, encouragement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and everyone having you know a sort of nice day, whether they really were or not. That's sort of that sort of slightly insincere nice day, and then the TV news. I don't think I could cope with. Yeah. I, I suppose you. I mean, you, I guess you have a, you have a choice to not tune that out. Yeah. <laughs> in perhaps both those respects, yeah, you exactly. mentioned. Here's something over your career. What what do you think, in, um, particularly recently, what's had the most meaningful effects on how you write or what you write? Is it is it anything to do with where you are and the location? Or is it something to do with just being an older? more I suppose rounded experienced person or is it neither of those or, it, or, it, or perhaps it's, a, it's both of them to a degree I think there are times when even though I thought the place that I was writing something had nothing to do with the thing I was writing were I to look back on it now more often than not I think it actually probably did mm. have more of an effect than I could have known I think certainly on this new album it'd be fair to say that um, America might have slid into the booth a little bit more yeah our last record I had a, I have a recollection of and this may have been something i created myself but the perception of that being as though it was like a, a more american record than the ones that had come before it which i think may well be some truth in that but i d don't know if that's more to do with the way it sounded and the sonics of it than it was like necessarily the whether that was so true of the lyrics whereas I'd find that harder to disagree with your way to say that about this album. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, with this record, I don't know, do you have a sort of self-imposed need to change, uh, react from one record to the other? Or is this simply a case of I couldn't write another another AM <laughs> just, we've made the, we've done the best AM we can therefore let's we can't do that again I think it is perhaps exactly that but not uh, with 
I, I sensed a great deal of like exasperation in your voice when you <laughs> delivered it. There, yeah. well, I think yeah, it's more yeah. like I actually couldn't have written another. Yeah, AM, like you know. Yeah, that's what I mean. Rather than, I can't do another. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, and I think that's always be, perhaps been true. Um, even I think our first two records sound pretty similar to one another. Although I think that's a product of how quickly one came after the other. Yeah. Um, I think it's not as though we weren't trying to wriggle away from that first record. In fact, I think that's why it probably did come so fast after that first one was like, let's get out of here and like, if this is going to go anywhere, we're going to have to um, get moving. Like, um, and I, and I, yeah, I think that's as time's gone on. Perhaps what I've realised is what makes it sound like the band is inherent in us making music together. And even if you want to like, whatever location you go to, not to completely contradict what I just said, because I do believe it has an effect on it, yeah. but it's not going to rid you of yourself. Right? Yeah. So tell the story of the record. Does it all change? Am I right in thinking, uh, or read somewhere, that your manager bought you a piano? And would it be true to say uh, that the piano is almost the key that unlocks the record? I think it's absolutely fair enough to, to say that, yeah. But I, I think out of all the things that yeah contributed to what I'm left with now, which is this record, I think that was the... I, I put it this way, I don't remember having any ideas before that was right. in the room. Yeah, like right. I, I think, in fact, I remember sort of struggling to get off the mark, to be quite honest. Um, I was thinking about this the other day, like I think, I just remember when I first picked up an electric guitar, even before like I wrote the songs that became our first album, there was such a place I was taken to by holding like an electric guitar and like amplifying it and it, and I started writing lyrics, I think, I feel like as a result of that experience and they weren't the ones that ended up being the thing like far from it but it was down to that yeah. picking up that thing and it's not that I don't get excited now playing guitar I do and sort of play loads of guitar on this album but I think as a writing tool I'd reached a point where, where I felt as though I knew where I was going to go here when I picked it up and that was sort of preventing me going anywhere yeah uh, so the guitar is just is just penning you in in a way. There's certain parameters with, within which you can operate, whereas the piano gives you a whole new. Uh, piano suddenly, yeah, gave me. It opened up my imagination again, I think. And so, like in the same way, like when I was 16, I plugged that guitar in and like I don't know, jumped around me. Back garden can, or whatever. I've, yeah, I can, I've got an image in my head. Yeah. So the piano. I, don't know why I chose to set that scene in my back garden. That was a strange one. I wonder if the listeners picked up on that being a it's very, exterior. It's very Sheffield. It had to be the back garden or the kitchen. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. Do you know what, Steve? I don't know if I've ever uh, taken it to the kitchen, but I must. <laughs> Please do. Jarvis Cocker did some of his finest work. Isn't it true he wrote most of the lyrics in virtually one night to different class sitting in his mum's kitchen? Is that uh, I, well? That true? If it's not true, it's true now. It's, it's been on the radio. It true, totally I know. true. Uh, <laughs> did you know where you were going with it, though? So you've got basically a blank canvas all of a sudden, and uh, and as you started writing, were you surprised by what was coming out? Were you excited? Were you scared? Were you? Did I, you know anything? Well, I mean, was it liberating? Even I think I like the the ones at the front of that more than I did right. the ones towards the end of it. <laughs> Surprised? I, I suppose I think um, you have to be, or like that in my estimation anyway, I think that's almost, if there isn't some sense of you being led by it somewhere, I find it difficult to get anywhere really, I think. There, there may have been something I fancy, I sort of fancied dragging into the light, let's say. Yeah. You know, there might have been various ways of like, attempting to do that, but it has to ultimately, or to some extent, it feels like it has a mind of its own yeah. and it's going like somewhere and it's completely made up as it goes along. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, just were, for me anyway. Like. Were you were you listening to anything or reading anything or watching anything at the time, which <laughs> which helps sort of lead where it went um, at all? Yeah. <laughs> what were those? Absolutely. Things? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the first tune I wrote for the record is the first one that we hear on on there called star treatment in the end and um to be honest part of the the way it's, the record's been released is it, it all came out together and i think the idea that this be the first song that people had hear uh, was sort of instrumental in that ending up being the way it yeah. was released yeah i think i was watching eight and a half the fellini flick and um that universe that's created in that film is like 
there's this Dion record called Born to Be With You, which I've been talking about for like 10 years, it feels like, and, and chasing down. And this is like the, the film I like always talk about right. when I'm like right. sort of backed into a corner. But, right. it, but it is certainly relevant in the case of this song. And is, I don't know if we want to really like go into that now but the, that's a thing I was watching right. in relation to the album I mean I don't know there's a lot maybe the point is I think in the past what I was reading and what I was watching seemed more like ways to escape from um, what I was writing right and I, I think um, we've often sat in here I suppose before and mm. talked a lot about what music we were listening to and yeah. like not that we weren't listening to music when we were doing this one of course we were and it, we can go into like all that if you want as well but I think I don't know this this time is something about the movies like seeped into it a lot more than mm. uh, whereas in the past I'm sure they did as well, but mm. yeah, not to the extent that they did this time. The Dion thing is interesting because I had no idea about Dion's previous life. I just think the Wanderer, or right. I did until Noel Gallagher came in one Christmas. Okay. We do an interview every year where he just brings a bunch of records in, and he brought in Daddy Rolling by Dion, which I don't think it's on the album, which you've mentioned in relation to this album. Intermittently, it? yeah. <laughs> but it's on the album, which is actually called Dion, which also features. Have you ever heard Dion's version of Purple Haze? If you I haven't, don't know if I have. Like, yeah, no. Please do. It, yeah. it bears no relation to any other version All of right. Purple Haze. That's definitely, it's worth a listen. Before we play a track from uh, another track from the record, is it lonely? Do you find it lonely writing? Do you put yourself in a room and think, oh, I'm going to write today? And is that cutting yourself off? Is that a, is that a lonely experience sometimes? Um, if the answer to that is yes, then it's somehow without it's negative connotation right. okay. attached to it. Yeah. It's probably one of the places I feel most comfortable mm. in, to be honest, yeah. yeah. And um, I had the dog with me a lot of the time. Right, well, <laughs> there you go. Man's best friend. What's the dog's name? The dog's name Scooter. Scooter, the dog named yeah. after anything particular? I wouldn't be the one to ask. <laughs> right, OK. Uh, and uh, when you'd got a batch of these songs and played them to the rest of the band, what did the rest of the band say? What did they say? They, I mean, we kind of, um, I, I suppose another, maybe a point as we're like passing through this was that in the past, I suppose the lonely writing process that I um, have to endure is left sort of uh, in the air after, until it's taken to like a rehearsal room or, or a recording studio and we all work on it together and record the album. The distinction this time is I'd, I had this piano in the room, but I also had this eight-track recorder and started sort of recording the record by myself. So at the point when Jamie came and got involved, right. we were like working on these recordings together, and yeah. a lot of what we did did end up on the on what we're hearing now, Steve. Yeah, let's hear another track from it. It's uh, from the new Arctic Monkeys album, and this is four out of five. Arctic Monkeys on Six Music, four out of five from the album, which was released last Friday when I was away on tour. Bought my copy in uh, Leicester, according to the nice fella behind the counter in a well-known high street chain of record shops, the last one. Uh, according to him, it's doing all right. Uh, Alex Turner is with it. Can you tell us about this? Yeah. Is this the reel to reel then, the, the one that you were using? That right, no, so on, that's on the like uh, on the, so the machine I was just referring to before you uh, played that last track was... Um, an eight-track recorder. Oh, an actual prop, right. The, that thing underneath the model there is a Revox A77, which is a, it's just a two-track. But I'd, it is in my studio, and like it's what I'd use for like you know the classic uh, slapback effect, right? Which I'm, I know you're familiar with. <laughs> can, um, can you tell I have no idea what you're saying just by the blankness in my face? Steve, What's a slapback? You know, you know the way around, that, surely. <laughs> this looks exactly like though uh, the old Philips reel-to-reel that my dad had because i'm so old that when i started recording records off the radio we didn't have a cassette player yeah. in our house we just recorded onto one making of a bit of a comeback i heard yeah and the model did you design or make the model i, d I did cut that out me saying we're a craft knife you got an artistic bent then i didn't realize because this is brilliant this looks terrific thanks steve must have taken you ages though like, man yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it took it a moment, yeah. <laughs> Just out of interest, do you make any notes along the way in between records or when you've started thinking about writing a record? I'm making them out of our interview now, oh, yeah. pen and paper out here. So little, what, snapshots, little lines that you write? You must have books and books of them, do you? Yes, yeah, I've got a few, yeah. I think when, when you write something, 
when you put pen to paper and write something down, it's like you, you remember it in a different way, I think. Or yes. It, that's how I've always believed that to be. Even from, like, school, I remember, like, you'd have your little French vocabulary book or whatever, and when you, like... I remember, like, when you write the phrase, you, then that's when yeah. you sort of, uh, yeah. you know... Um, it's, it's Come on, a, Sassy Cree. Some, something which, I, I mean, one of the lines that I picked up on the first time I heard it is that, um, is it a montage of the latest ancient ruins soundtracked by a chorus if you don't know what you're doing? I laughed out loud. Me and my friend Go Tom, on, we were laughing out loud. Get in there, heard Steve. That. It was amazing. Well, just, and I don't know what image you had in your head, but in my, my head, I've just got the idea that Sky Sports are broadcasting the G15 conference in front of a live <laughs> crowd of football fans giving their frank and honest opinion and that's a terrifically entertaining image well <laughs> i wish you were out in review <laughs> <laughs> but it's part of the theme of the record though attempting to write about what's going on now and where you are except setting that record against this sort of fantasy backdrop which i think began with the idea that science fiction it seems like it seems to me like that's often what's happening in a lot of science fiction in it you know the, mm. there is these worlds that are created that don't have the rules that ours does and they through these worlds we're allowed to like explore ideas that do relate to mm. what's going on around us and i think i began probably through watching the uh fast bender world on a wire is, is i think where like that's that sort of started me off looking at that idea and then there's a song on there called Science Fiction that sort of looks at that, I suppose. But through that, I'd accessed this vocabulary, I suppose, that's associated mm. with that. And then next thing I know, I'm asking James Ford to make a rocket ship sound on an ARP. <laughs> but I suppose once you've started, you've got to explore, haven't you? Like you would in any science fiction novel, you've just got to explore what's there. That's what well, I suppose, back to that thing we're saying, like when it, it, you start writing something and if it, it feels like it's trying to go in this direction, mm. then you just try and got find it. a way to yeah. facilitate that. And, and uh, as you write at the moment, do you think about, I mean, you make a lot of points, you know, it's a very dense, obviously, album, but you make a lot of different points even within one song in is it back phone which has got that line about i launched my new fragrance integrity right what's it to prove that i can't be bought something right i mean right. now everyone's thought why are you doing this david beckham you don't need to have a perfume <laughs> it's going to do nothing for you apart from it's not making you cooler it's just making us question you know i mean your ego and your bank account surely don't need a fragrance to go with it and that's what i get out of that in just two lines of song and there are a lot of two lines of songs making different points um whereas on i suppose on the last monkeys record you know that or even the record i did just before this with miles you know there are songs that they're about what they're about aren't they you know like why do you only call me when you're high or whatever it's like it is starts and ends with there and maybe that thing spills onto some of the other tracks or that the tone of that yeah but um i, th I think i became less concerned on this album like compartmentalizing every idea to where like each song became this episode yes that, uh, okay that like sort of starts and ends in that three minutes and i think then you sort of allowed me sense to spread these ideas across the whole record but just make them all pull in the same direction yeah well, hopefully that'll be more effective do the bands ever uh, pick out a line and say where did this come from what what is what is this one i think certainly like we say for instance when we were working on it in that when you know jamie first came over like i'll be playing him back the recordings that i've made yeah, they de definitely like, would react to certain things, and then I suppose yeah. that is there's like an encouragement that certainly comes with that. Yeah. But I mean, if you if, like the thing that you just mentioned about the fragrance or whatever, it's you, the way you interpreted it seems in the vicinity of like the way I expected it to be yeah. interpreted. But it's sort of just it's not as though it starts with like how I would imagine something is going to be interpreted. It's more like it starts with I could see the way the letters look on the integrity fragrance bottle yeah. and then once you sort of start thinking about the idea of bottling yeah. integrity the thing sort of writes itself so sometimes images images first or a sort of gut instinct first and then work it out later even you don't know exactly where you, where it's where, gonna where go going now to, yeah. it's absolutely not now and then like well the old punchline with that like um it's like the idea of a fragrance called integrity and selling the fact that you can't be bought after like you get the other thing and the idea that like life's becoming the spectator sport or whatever the last bit of it seems to just 
Right, yeah. it's anything. I suppose there is a danger where you get people like me just taking out two lines, but with without the rest of it to put it into context to soften it or give it more edge, then it's just it's a line on its own. But there's but hopefully, there's like lot. you said, like, like if you had a laugh about it with your friend, you know, like that's sort of also what it's trying to do. Yeah. Like, obviously, like yeah. that, that is like also an objective, like. I don't. I think it was something like I think I saw like Leonard Cohen talking about writing, and and that idea that if you pull out one thing from one of his songs, you're gonna be like, what is he on about? Like, but in the context of everything, I feel like you know exactly where he's coming from. Like, especially with a writer like him, I, I think that you know you right there with him. Like, as you listen to a song of his in its entirety or, or a record. I just even him talk about that idea of pulling one thing out and it not making that much sense is definitely something that like, spurred me on to approaching this record in that way and like not being so concerned, like I say, like yeah. just making the thing be about whatever it's about. Yeah. There are lots of clues on this uh, record if you want to go away and uh, find them. It is, it's an absolute lesson, I think, this album in being honest with yourself. And obviously there'll be mixed reactions from fans. I was thinking about this because sometimes we as fans are more attached to a band's past than the band is because they've been there and moved on. Uh, but this is where the Arctic Monkeys are right now. Thank you very much uh, for coming in and talking to Thanks us. Thanks for having me, Steve. Uh, this is another track from the album, the concluding track, in fact. This is the Ultra Cheese.